Just bounce to this. Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial here on Glass Hand Films. My name is Brandon Clements and in today's tutorial we're going to take a look at your first day inside of Octane Render Engine in Cinema 4D. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into our project and see how we can get some pretty awesome looking photoreal images out of Octane for Cinema 4D. Before we get started, one thing to keep in mind. Octane in its current version only uses NVIDIA graphics cards because it runs off of the CUDA technology. So uh, unfortunately, if you do not have an NVIDIA card, it will not work as of right now. Um, so with the next version of Octane 3, there's talk of OpenCL, which would you know actually use any kind of graphics cards. But until then, NVIDIA only right now. Now the cool thing about Octane is that it's different from every other renderer that I've used in the past. And by that I mean it's a GPU renderer, it's not a CPU renderer. Um, and you can see here on the menu bar, once you load it into your plugins folder, uh, you'll see the Octane dialog box um, that I'm popping up right here. And we have the Octane settings and we have the live viewer window. And if I go ahead and click on the live viewer window, you can see it jumps up onto the screen nice and large and then we can go ahead and access our settings by clicking this here or we can just go ahead and click that but um, this is really the the meat and potatoes of the Octane render, render engine right here um, we got everything from all of our samples and all of our different bounces um, all the way down into some of our optimization settings and then if we go ahead into the settings here you can see that we have um, our GPUs that show up. So I have three 980 Ti's in this rig right here. And then you have a drop down box right here, which is really cool because you can set the priority of your graphics cards when these are all checked. So um, I usually work on low and medium when I'm actually kind of getting a look out of the scene that I want and testing shaders. And then I'll go ahead and um, uncheck these use priorities and leave that at high. And then I'll know that the system is using 100% of my graphics processing units to build out the images that we need. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about some of the different buttons here on the live viewer. Of course, we have the, um, the send uh, everything to the render view window right here. So what this will do, um, if you're making changes to your scene, you're creating new meshes, you're creating new materials, you're gonna wanna resend that to the renderer. You're gonna wanna cache all that geometry. We'll go ahead and click that. And you can see that it's exporting all the different uh, materials and all the different geometry and you'll see here in a little bit it will actually pop up and it'll start um, its rendering process so um, the the next button here is uh, restarting a new render um, when you're actually moving the camera sometimes you need to refresh the window you can do that here um, you can pause your render you stop your render and then you uh, you have your settings and then you can actually use a lock resolution which can be invoked here um, by you can see that I have it on 1920 by 1080 so we can go ahead and work with the live viewer when you're actually building out your scenes um, but then of course you can use the uh, picture viewer just like any other render you just choose octane render and then we have all of our settings here which are going to be controlled globally by your octane settings but of course you can do it here as well if you wanted to and then you can see on the multipass I have the post effects enabled just by right clicking and adding the post effects and once we actually go into our render passes of our global settings, you can see that I've got some of these different things checked and they will actually be included into the OpenEXR. So really easy to get everything set up. Uh, you can see that I'm using uh, indirect, uh, diffuse indirect, diffuse direct, reflection indirect, reflection direct, environment, and we're getting all these different passes and we're also being able to get our Z-depth passes and our ambient inclusion and our motion vector passes. So it's really, really easy to go ahead and set everything up here. Enabling the post effects is really important. And then you have to go in and set up your render passes. And I render out open EXR, zip format, 16-bit. I usually do that for most of um, the, the projects that I work on. And then of course, everything keeping it linear. The most powerful thing about Octane for me is that I'm able to work and see things updated in real time. So if I click on um, the camera that I'm looking through right here, um, we go ahead and we add tags to these objects like lights and cameras. And of course we have a sky object which contains an HDR image that I'm using. So uh, it, 
pretty much like every other render that I've used that's been a plugin for Cinema 4D, you're using uh, a system of tags to translate Cinema 4D objects into the render's native objects that it's using. So right now I don't have lock resolution on, so I can make this window as big as I want, and then we'll go ahead and update. So we'll go ahead and check out some of these awesome settings here. I have depth of field enabled and um, to me it doesn't seem like it slows it down. It works really well. So we'll go down the list and take a look at some of these settings. F-stop, if you're a photographer or you're familiar with digital cameras or any kind of cameras, uh, you'll know that these two correlate uh, very closely. So if I wanted to go ahead and put 1.8 and for the F-stop you can see my, that my aperture changes um, as well and then I can actually I have my focal depth to the point of which I want it to be in view and focus. Uh, and a great way you can do that is you can click the focus picker right here, um, which is really awesome. Or you can just hold control and middle click anywhere on the scene that I would like to be in focus. So like this lamp here, um, control middle click, and it will actually change the focal depth here for you, uh, which is great when you're uh, floating around your scene. You want to change things up and see what they look like. And then, of course, um, you have some other settings here uh, that I haven't touched for the scene particularly. But we also have the camera imager, so um, we can go ahead and enable this, and we can set our exposure here. But I've, I usually control this separately here in the actual Octane settings, um, so this is more of a global way of doing things um, and of course you can do it on the tag you just have to enable it here and then you're off and running now let's take a look at how I did some of the lighting in this scene so I'll go ahead and close this dialog box real quick and we'll close everything from Octane I just want to float out and show you some of my uh, my lighting setup for the scene to actually get it how I wanted it to look and this is kind of a big overview you can see my camera I'm going to go ahead and hide that by uh, turning on the stoplight, and I'll turn the stoplight on in that camera. Um, so, again, in other tutorials, I talk about this a lot. You want to create uh, a believable lighting setup, but you also want to think about it in terms of real world. Like, how would you set up this for a photography shoot, or how would you set it up for a film shoot? So I think about that every time I start a project. And you can see this light out here. Let's see, the sunlight. It is an area light that is incredibly small. Okay, so if we actually look at the details, you can see that the size in the X and the Y is two centimeters by two centimeters. And um, I did that because sunlight, if you've seen it from like on a clear day, it creates very sharp shadows. So if you click on the actual area light uh, octane tag, you'll see um, the temperature 5600 and you know the intensity the power right here is very high and then let's look at the window fill and I use this as just a overall skylight so it's got more of a blue of course <laughs> really blue uh, tint to it so it's kind of the overall light that would be in the scene that would just fill and um, again I don't want this light to be extremely large because I want to keep my shadows defined to a certain um, to a certain area Okay, I don't want them to be too blurry. And then um, you can see some of these other fill lights that I'm using. Let's talk about this fill light over here on the left. Uh, this is really just to get an overall kind of um, brighter look to the scene. I wasn't able to bounce so much light over from the right side. So I had to actually uh, have a light here on the left and you can see the color temperature and the power. It's kind of small, again, um, not a very high intensity, but you can see how it's pointing back out into the scene this direction. And then, uh, again, this is kind of like my, you know, my dream light. If I could actually have a size that was 300 centimeters by 300 centimeters in a room, uh, just an overall really soft light, uh, f you know, any kind of photographer that would set this up, it'd just be a super, super soft uh, box. So you can see the, uh, the power here. Um, not too high because it's so large, and then the temperature as well. All right. So let's go ahead and we'll go back and look through our camera again, and I'll bring up the Octane Live Viewer. And let's talk about some of the why I chose some of these render settings. And there's a lot of great stuff online that um, I went ahead and checked out, but I'll run you through some of the stuff that's on Otoy's website, um, which is really cool. Uh, I think you can find it all on Vimeo. Uh, but again, 
thanks a lot for Otoy for making this so simple. Uh, the max samples here, of course, if you've ever used any kind of render engine, you know what sampling is. Um, this is kind of a limiter for how many rays are being fired out into the scene. Um, but you know, I don't, I don't want to have too high and I don't want to have too low. So it seems like most scenes, 2048 is a great place to start. And that's something that Otoy says on their website. Um, now the diffuse depth and specular depth, uh, the specular depth, I do not have any, um, refractive materials in the scene. They're all very solid objects. So I have that set to zero. Um, and if I crank that up all the way to the max, it's not going to make a difference because there's nothing in the scene that is uh, refractive. So the diffuse depth is the actual bounce of global illumination. So, or indirect calculation, whatever you want to uh, talk about it as. So as I increase this, you can see that around a difference between four and five, there isn't a huge difference there. So um, you I could leave this at four and get about the exact same image uh, without losing a loss of quality. Um, so you really just start from zero and just bring those up. And um, I would I would do that for um, now the the path term power I I haven't used at all or any of the ray epsilon or the uh, filter size. But uh, the caustic blur, um, now this is what it's talking about, is blurring the caustics in your scene. So uh, if you don't need those to be incredibly defined, depending on what you're rendering, so if you have a lot of glass and you need those caustics to be sharp, um, I would leave this probably at default or maybe try to bring it up um, so that it blurs it out just a little bit to get some better render times. Uh, but I could leave this at like 0.2 for this scene and probably get a faster speed out of everything. And the uh, GI clamp, again, just bring this down from zero and and then ramp it up until you see a difference. And for me, it was like 0.87. And then uh, I believe this is at default, the coherent ratio. So if you want to know exactly um, what these render settings are doing, again, check out the toy site. So if you right click and you say toggle info, it will bring up this menu right here. And I love to have it because um, I like to know where it's at percentage wise in terms of rendering and the time, everything right here is listed for you. It's great. Love it. Um, and then we can look at some of the materials. So I'll pause the render real quick. So we're not um, causing too much strain on the system. And I'll bring up one of the, let's see, one of these metal materials. So this steel material right here um, and it's super easy to jump in and start creating different materials here in Octane so you have different material types here in Octane uh, diffuse is overall there's not a lot of reflection glossy um, of course is very reflective and then you have specular which is just like a reflect refractive material and so for most of the materials I have in the scene, pretty much all the materials I have in the scene are set to glossy. And then I've came into the roughness and actually uh, mess with this value here to get something either blurry or very sharp in terms of that reflection. So if I bring that down and we're not um, using the texture, you can see super diffuse uh, reflection and then a very, uh, very sharp reflection. And then uh, we also have things like, uh, of course, bump, normal, and displacement, which are you know pretty self-explanatory. And then the index um, factor, which is the index of refraction, um, you know, is driving the overall reflective value value of this uh, material here. And it's also uh, talking about the glancing angle and the facing angle. So if I go to 1.6, like a plastic. You can see it's very reflective on the edges, but when you look straight into it, it's not quite as reflective. And then as I increase it, like a metal, more metallic surface, you can see it's reflective all over. Okay, so let's take it. So let's look at some of the uh, power of Octane Render. So if I go over here and we're going to just shut off the, um, you can see, aperture. I'm just going to put that at zero so we do not have any depth of field. And um, then what we can do is we can choose the pick material option right here and just click. And then you can see that um, Octane intelligently knows what material I was talking about. So we can open that up, this white steel that I've named it. Um, and then we can go in here and just start playing around with some of these settings. So if, um, 
you know, if the client didn't like how rough that was, we can actually bring up, you know, now you can see it's not as dirty or it's not as rugged as it once looked. But then you, we can make it super shiny. So uh, you can just play with all your materials like this and it makes it so much easier. And of course, if we needed this to be any bigger, we can make it bigger. You know, if we needed to actually zoom in, we can use a live viewer to zoom in. And it makes everything a lot easier to manage and deal with. So really cool stuff. And then of course, um, we still have that invoke, so you can go ahead and change that, turn it off. Maybe we want to change this material. So we ramp this down, we change it. Maybe we come into the specular color, we change that. And then everything will update here in real time. So it's something that I was skeptical, skeptical at first, but you can see uh, if we toggle the info and watch the progress of this going. And of course, remember we're at low priority right now, so it's not using my full uh, power of the graphics cards that are in my system. But uh, I can tell you that at 1920 by 1080, um, it was taking around four to five minutes a frame to abs absolutely have no noise and actually one more setting I would like to show you for animations to keep in mind is uh, the static noise and it's good to have this checked because uh, if there is kind of any flickering the pattern of the flickering or um, the noise the video noise the digital noise will actually uh, be constant throughout each frame uh, which is an awesome feature that they have so definitely for animations keep that checked because it will help a lot so, yeah, it's it's a great tool and something that I'll be using in the future. Definitely for more future tutorials we'll have. Um, we'll talk about Octane even more and more. But I hope this has given you guys some insight to Octane for your first day inside of Octane. It will hopefully get you up and running and start doing some projects and seeing some things that you'd like to see. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Um, give this video a like. And also check out our Facebook, our Instagram, Twitter. Keep up with us there because we're always working on new projects, uh, things that we're trying out. Share this video with your friends because uh, a lot of high-end gaming cards actually use Octane very well. Um, so you can get some pretty awesome fast renders out into your clients and make everyone a little bit happier. So thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.